extrajudicial executions or executions after summary trials, torture, rape, unlawful imprisonment, persecution on grounds of political and religious belief. Iran, in many respects, is a case study in crimes against humanity. Even if we do not have in Iran a situation of war as we did in the former Yugoslavia or elsewhere, which makes the crimes against humanity even less excusable, given the fact that what we have is a war by a regime against its own people. We spoke briefly about the events of 1988, which I would call, based on my experience with the former Yugoslavia, the equivalent of our Srebrenica. Those of you who know about the Bosnian War knew that the ethnic cleansing campaign involved horrors in many different places. But the mass murder of almost 7,000 Bosnian Muslims in the Srebrenica enclave in the summer of 2005 somehow symbolized and captured in a single incident the extremes and horrors of the ethnic cleansing campaign. We had executions of tens of thousands of people in Iran throughout the 1980s. But somehow it was the fatwa of Ayatollah Khomeini in 1988, which involved virtually the extermination of all leftist prisoners in Iran's prisons that captured the horrors of the regime. Now, what relevance does what happened 21 years ago have to what is happening in Iran today? The relevance is that the culture of impunity, which that act of mass murder represents, continues to haunt us today in Iran. Because those that were responsible for this mass murder not only were never punished, but they were rewarded. They were rewarded for their loyalty to the regime. Our witness spoke about the death commission, which was responsible for selecting who would be killed and who would be spared. Very often through trials that lasted no more than one minute. And as she explained, the questions were very simple. Are you a Muslim believer? And do you support the Islamic Republic of Iran and the supremacy of the Imam? If the answer was no, one would be immediately executed. Who were the members of this death commission and where are they today? It's a very long list of senior officials in today's Islamic Republic of Iran. To give one example, Mr. Mustafa Pur Muhammadi, who was a member of the Death Commission in Tehran, was the Minister of Interior in the first cabinet of President Ahmadinejad, and today is a member of a commission that is dealing with the prisoners that were arrested during the recent protests. Mr. Hussein Ali Nayeli, another member of the Death Commission, today is the Deputy Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of Iran. Mr. Ibrahim Raisi, another member of the Death Commission, is also today a member of the Commission that is looking into the um, uh, treatment of the uh, prisoners that were participating in the recent protests. Mr. Esmail Shushtari, another member of the Death Commission, was the Minister of Justice from 1989 to 2005. And I'm afraid that I could stand here all afternoon giving you a list of individuals occupying senior positions in the Iranian government, all of whom should, instead of being ministers, should be standing in the dock in The Hague facing prosecution. Now, I raise this issue to explain that until there's accountability for crimes against humanity, it will be impossible to build a better future in Iran. And when we speak about what sort of future we want to build in Iran, we have to think not so much simply about getting rid of one group of tyrants in order to replace them with yet another group of tyrants, which is what happened 30 years ago, we ended up in a far worse situation. But we have to think about changing the rules of power and legitimacy. We have to think about building a democratic culture. And once again, 
getting back to the testimony of these victims and witnesses today. We see the power of human rights, the power of saying that we're not going to ask if the victim was a member of the imperial government of the Shah, or was a communist, or an Islamic reformist, because all human beings, by virtue of their inherent dignity, are entitled to rights. And that is what the people that brave the bullets and the beatings and the torture and the rapes in Iran are saying to us, that they want to build a new Iran where the rights of every Iranian citizen is respected. 